I got my specific person. Now what? So you are manifesting a specific person and you are now in communication with them. You are now in a relationship with them. You're married to your specific person and you are trying to make that relationship even better. You're currently fighting. And as a result of the fighting, you wanna make the relationship happier, healthier, more, loving. What exactly do you guys need to do in order to do that? We're going to give you some tips and pointers today. I'm going to give you some tips and pointers today so that you can do exactly that. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful duckling. Thank you for subscribing, smashing the like button, sharing my videos. I love you forever. I am the best life coach with a 99.6% success rate and getting people back together with the love of their life. It's not the only thing I do. I do specialize in it though. If you would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one to get your SP or anything else, join my paid Facebook group, up level your money with Delivery Dawn. Check out the links in the description below. So you're back together with your specific person. We're just gonna say back together. Um, I hate that phrase because you still had a relationship with that person, even though you were in no contact, you were not talking, you were, I hate it, ghosted because they didn't really die. But you know, when you were ghosted and you think you're back together. I think you up leveled your relationship. I think of a relationship always as like the Sears Tower in Chicago, the Empire State Building, the Eiffel Tower. It's levels. Our relationships have levels. The first level we meet, we get to know each other. The second level we're dating. The third level we are fully committed. The fourth level you broke up. So now we got to go to the fifth level because we don't want to recreate what was down here because that caused the breakup. So we're going to go to the fifth level of our relationship and we're going to make it better than it ever was. We're going to make sure that they're honest and trustworthy, that they are amazing and that they treat us very well. So apparently obsessed is a word I'm not allowed to say because I hate that word. If you use the word obsessed and you have a good meaning to it, I don't have a problem with you continuing to use the word obsessed. But I am so sick and tired of these spoiled rotten people, and I am literally saying spoiled rotten people who think you cannot use the word spoiled. Your grandfather spoiled your grandmother, and y'all want a relationship like grandma and grandpa had where this guy doted on her. So. Grandpa spoiled your grandma. She didn't work. She stayed home all day. She did her own thing, which is exactly what a lot of you want. Raised, had children, raised the children, and you all are telling me that I want this. Well, you want grandma and grandpa's relationship? They didn't have a bad word to spoiled. Spoiled is the millennials, your keyboard warriors who sit there and get on the keyboard and type things that you don't like. So now I'm not allowed to say spoiled because spoiled is just as bad as obsessed. Well, A, B, C, D, F, you know the next letter to that because I am really ticked off and I am not going to censor my words anymore. So if you don't like it, go find somebody else to follow. And to the person who left me that message, I'm not mad at you. I was having a Monday and didn't realize that it came off blunt. I apologize because I am the big person who understands that texting is blunt. There's nothing simple in texting. So if you don't like spoiled, please leave my channel. If you have a bad association with spoiled and you're okay with me using it, welcome back to my channel, my beautiful duckling. I love you. Your grandmother did not make your grandfather obsessed. The reason their relationship worked is because they talked to each other. They literally talked to each other. They sat down at the table and they had dinner with the children 
After the children left the table, they were sitting there drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes. And then one of them would get up and do the dishes. It wasn't always grandpa who did the dishes. Sometimes grandpa did the dishes. And then they would sit down in the living room and they would read a book, read the newspaper, or, oh my God, talk to each other again. Because they talk to each other a lot. You guys want a lot of text messages. They talk to each other face to face. It was as if grandpa was sitting right there and they talked to each other. You should try it someday. Because the hardest thing that I have found is that I have to teach people how to talk to their specific person face to face. You guys text all day long. Put the phone away. Put the phone away. Because you're married to that person. They're sitting in that chair. You don't want to be sitting here on your phone texting them. And the reason a lot of people are losing them is because they don't know how to talk to them. And I never thought my job as a life coach to helping you guys having great relationships was to teach you how to talk to your specific person. Because this is kind of like, hey, how was your day? Well, can't, can't ask that question because I planned their day. Hey, uh, how was your lunch? Well, it was great because I made it for them. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to have to be in your head 86,400 seconds a day putting words into that person's mouth. Give them the free will to talk to you. Please give them the free will to talk to you. Because when they're sitting over there and they don't know what to say, it's because you didn't put words in their mouth. So you come up with a phrase. He's obsessed with me. Well, now he's sitting there. What is he obsessed with? Sitting in your chair? He's obsessed with sitting in your chair now next to you. Oh, no, he has to be over here on the couch so that you can, you know, you can snuggle with him all night long and watch Netflix. But you can't talk because that's what you're being taught. You can't talk. So you got to figure out while he's sitting in that chair and you're obsessed with, he's obsessed with you, what he's going to wear tomorrow what he's gonna eat for lunch tomorrow, when you pack his lunch for work, what he's going to eat for dinner, because you gotta figure out dinner. Oh, what are you gonna do for breakfast? Did you make him coffee? Because you gotta think about this. Who took a shower first? Who went to the bathroom first? Who brushed their teeth first? Like, what exactly are you thinking? Is he not talking to anybody at work? Because you didn't give him words to talk about at work. Because that, that, that's a no-no. He can't talk to anybody besides you. So now you gotta figure out what you're gonna text him so he can text you back. And then you gotta figure out what he's gonna wear, when his time he's coming home, how much money he's bringing home. It's overwhelming. Let go, stop. Stop driving yourself crazy. Cause grandma never did any of those things. Grandma got up in the morning. She went to the bathroom. She pitter pattered around the bedroom for a few minutes doing whatever she needed to do. She came out and went into the kitchen. She made coffee, because that's what they drank back then. She started breakfast so he could have something to eat before he went to work. She didn't ask him what he wanted to eat. She knew what he liked, so she made those. So this morning she made pancakes. Yesterday she made eggs. Tomorrow she's gonna make what she feels like. He's sitting at the breakfast table and she has her coffee and breakfast and he has his coffee and breakfast and they talked to each other again. Oh my God, that's three times in 20, less than 24 hours that they talked to each other. She might've asked him, what do you want for dinner? And he said, I want pork roast and dumplings, babe. And she said, okay. Oh, he didn't call her babe. He called her sweetie or honey or by her name. Oh my God, he called her by her name. <gasps> That's like, oh, holy, oh my gosh. He didn't have this, all these cute little nicknames for him. So he told her she wanted pork and dumplings. He got up, he went to work, she kissed him goodbye. And then she went and took the pork out of the freezer. 
she put it on the counter another oh my god because that's what we did back then we put it on the counter to thaw and she had kids she started making stuff for the kids Suri's talking to me sorry so she may might have had to make breakfast now for the kids because they didn't get up or she's scurrying to make their lunches so they can go to school when you want that relationship, you got to talk to the person first of all, all right? You talk to your best friend. You talk to your best friend on the phone. You just don't text. You talk to your best friend in person. What do you talk about with your best friend? Everything. They might not want to know everything. They, they, they might not. Now, if, we're, if it, your specific person is a girl, of course we want to know everything. But if it's a guy, he might not want to know every single detail of your day. All right? He might not. Because guys don't need all that information. Plus, bless their hearts, they don't need to say 50 million words a day. They're great with 50 words a day. They don't talk a lot. So you're expecting them to text you. You're expecting them to do all these video chats, but then you don't want to talk to them when you're face to face. So take your relationship with your best friend. And I want you to think about this. Really think about this. How do you talk to your best friend? What do you say? What do you do? How do you talk to your mother? For those of you who don't have a, a mother, I know not everybody does. I am sorry. Um, an absent parent, though, honest to God, is better than a bad parent. I had an absent parent. Two absent parents. Four absent parents, actually. It is better to have an absent parent than a bad parent. And when somebody told me that, it was the most giving thing I ever heard. Who is a person that you talk to a lot? Is it somebody, you know, a friend, family, uh, a friend, somebody? What is that relationship like is what I want you to look at. So how do you talk to your best friend? You don't have to talk to them every day. You don't have to blow up their phone all the time. You don't have to fight with them. So you're not gonna fight with your specific person because you don't fight with your bestie. Do you fight with your coworkers? Who do you talk to at work? How do you interact with them? All topics of conversations are fair game in a marriage. So religion, politics, laws, um, movies, books, TV shows, what somebody did when you were at the grocery store that you witnessed, uh, family conversations, the kids, all topics are fair game. So in the relationships that I have had, talking to them, it's all fair game. I could be on the phone with people for hours. My clients know this. I love my clients. Um, I could be on the phone with somebody for hours and I never run out of anything to talk about. So you have to have this assumption that you always have amazing conversations. So communication is text messages, phone calls, face-to-face, -face, video chat. So he's sitting next to you. I don't want you to put the words in his head or her head. Ask a question. They have to answer the question. Now, normally I tell you to answer your questions. So he's sitting next to you. You can go, babe, why do you love me? Because I made you pork and dumplings tonight. But you're sitting here and you said, how was your day? Instead, be a little more specific. What was one thing you laughed about at work today? They'll tell you that story if they laughed at work. Oh, babe, I didn't laugh at work today. And you're like, oh, great. Now we suck at conversation. Ask another question. What was the most annoying thing that happened at work today then? Since you have no funny stories to entertain me, what was the most annoying thing that happened at work? And they'll tell you. Ask them about something that you heard on the news. Ask them about something your mother said. Ask them a question because they have to answer. 
And when you start with questions, it makes that conversation become easier. If you don't want to tell them about the toilet seat and you're tired of getting a wet butt, then go to the hardware store because apparently they have stickers or Amazon and order the please put me down sticker and put it under the bottom of the toilet seat to remind him to put it down. I have one, not by choice. I have one because your butt's falling out. The person who lived here before me put it on there. And I'm not gonna peel that thing off because ew, that's nasty. Just go buy a new toilet seat. But if I buy a new toilet seat, I'm going to miss that sign. So I'm gonna go on Amazon and I'm gonna get a new one. Because I gauge every person who uses my bathroom by that sign. It says, please put me down. If you don't put it down, that's a red flag to me. Not gonna kick you out, yell at you. I'm just gonna ask you point blank, why did you not put it down? And your answer is going to be huge because I thought I would just be mean and leave it up. Well, that's mean uh, because I was so like shocked, I forgot. Of course I put it down. I love that answer. It's your house. It would be disrespectful if I didn't because that's what a decent man would say. A douchebag is going to say, no, that's just stupid you put that on there. You're not gonna last very long in my life. But do little things. Rearrange the living room and say, how do you like the living room set up this way? Babe, I don't like it. Like my back's up against the window, I can't see out. Like my window is so that I can sit here, I can see out, the chair is there, I can see out. When I had my sectional, y'all know it was that way, an L behind, so I could look out, and I loved it. It also gave me a divider from my dining room to my living room. This, not so much, but it works because it gives more room for the kids to play over there, and this is the adult section. So that's what we're doing. We're leveling up our conversations when we talk to this person. So now that you've started with your questions, you can even debate Roe versus Wade. You could debate politics. You could debate religion. I had a sprinkler guy that worked with us when I was in the lawn business and running it with my ex-husband. And I used to drive him nuts. Oh my God, I would drive Doug nuts. Doug is a Lutheran, strict Lutheran, staunch Lutheran, very knowledgeable in the Bible and the Lutheran church and the way the Lutheran church teaches. I grew up Catholic, was transferred to a Lutheran church, also went to Baptist church. So mine's a little broad. So I heard what the Catholics said about the Lutheran and the Baptists said about the Lutherans. And then I had a friend who was really good in religion and would research stuff for me. I call him. I'd be like, I need you to research this. And he'd be like, why? I'm driving the sprinkler guy nuts. Okay, I'll help. I had other people. What are you doing today? Annoying the sprinkler guy. And I would debate it because I got information. I would Google and I would call people and then I'd go back at him on the next conversation and he would go and I literally would shut him up and he would have to come back. I didn't know it was driving the sprinkler guys crew, Nate. Oh, crazy. Their crew was like, oh my God, because I was literally all up in this. And I was having fun. And then the crew was like, whoever's debating religion with him, I wish they'd stop. And I'd be like, that's me. They're like, stop it, Susie. No, no, I don't want to stop it. It was fun. Find something like that. And a debate can be ongoing. Politics conversation could be ongoing. Politics are not my channel, but Trump versus Biden. Like, think about what you can debate. What do you think Biden did as a president that was really good? What do you think Trump did as a president that was really good? No politic comments, please. I'm using it as an example. We do not do politics on my channel. Roe versus Wade. What does your state say about it? What things can you talk about? Don't be afraid of those difficult topics.
those difficult conversations. I need something to drink, guys. Hold on a second. It's mine, so. I'm tongue-tied. My mouth is dry. So what other topics can you find? What topics do you talk about with your best friend? Did you read a book? Talk about the book you read. Moms, grandmoms, used to watch soap operas. Not all of those soap so, bleh, not all of those soap operas are on anymore. And they would talk about the soap operas that they watched with their partner. They literally would. They you watched the soap opera, but they knew everything about the soap opera because you were so enthralled with this soap opera. Did you go to the book club? Are you in a crocheting group, knitting group? What are the conversations that are going on on social media? Talk about those things. I've given you a lot of topics that you can use to talk. But you want that person to be your best friend. You got to talk to them. And I know that's scary. And, and I'm sorry because I'm not trying to make fun of it. I know it's scary. But that person over there is going, please talk to me. Don't fix everything in your head. Because when you fix everything in your head, it becomes chaotic. It becomes impossible. I have somebody I know, and she needed to get the new phone number of this per or specific person's new phone number. He got a new phone and a new phone number. Manifesting community teaches you to manifest him giving it to you. Why not just ask? Why not just ask? Hey, uh, you got a new phone. Can I get your new number? You get in their vehicle and phones pop up. And Savannah and Josh used to do this a lot. My phone is called My Love. My tablet is My Love 2.0. My watch is My Love. That's the name of my stuff. It is literally my love. So if you get in my daughter's car, it'll ask which phone you want to connect. And people would be like, who's my love? It's my mother. They don't believe it. So I would have to show them the name of my phone. My love. Get in somebody else's car. And my Bluetooth is on. And it'll pop up in their car. Who's my love? My phone. I love my phone. My phone is my love because I went through a period of time where I had phone problems. Uh, my ex-husband blew it into a burning pile. Somebody cut me off in traffic. It slid off that flap that folds down for the center seat on a pickup truck. Uh, it was sitting on there and uh, somebody cut me off and it went right in my coffee. Plop! That phone was ruined. Um, ran it over with the mower, you know, kind of did some really hard on phones for a while there. But when I named my phone, my love, it stopped. But now my name of my phone becomes a topic of conversation. So these things that you talk about with your best friend face to face is what you can talk about with your specific person. And I know it's awkward. But the next thing is learning how to have conversations. And you're going to go through an awkward period. You're going to go through a silent period. But you really don't want to come home at the end of your day or they come home at the end of your day, their day. And you sit in the chair and you're like, what do I say to them? What do I do? I'm really great at texting. Go through that awkward conversation. So I tell you guys, there's phases. You started dating. There was awkward conversations when you were dating. You met online. There's awkward text message conversations, but you put emojis in there to soften it. Let your sense of humor out. Like most people don't realize that I have a great sense of humor and a very warped sense of humor. I do not think it's funny when you're picking on people, but TikTok has these videos where Ryan Reynolds has these faces uh, and these little things are going as long as nobody gets hurt. I'm okay. 
I am okay with that. But if people are getting hurt, I'm not going to watch that. Yesterday, Ophelia and I were watching bears live on TikTok. There was a bear cam and she was literally saying, Susie, what is the bear doing? Why can't the bear, why isn't the bear falling? Because they were in a waterfall. Like literally there was a waterfall and there were two bears standing there. Susie, what's that? Susie, what's this? And I said, I think that's a tree stump. That's a rock. And she's just enthralled with it. So I left it on and I went to the ladies room. I come back from the ladies room and she's like, Susie, what is jumping in the water? And I'm like, what do you mean? So we're watching a little more and a fish jumps in the water. I don't know if it jumped or it fell off the waterfall, but the bear finally caught one. She's like, what is he gonna do with it? I said, eat it. She goes, I don't eat fish. You can have a conversation with your child. You can have a conversation with the person sitting next to you that you wanna spend your life with. So what's next? We have to learn how to communicate all over again, literally all over again, because of the fact that we spent so much time on our cell phones, like texting and we erase it and then we rewrite it and we erase it unless you're Susie. Mm. I'm not the worst speller in the world. I honestly used to win uh, spelling bees or come in second. I was always up there at the end of them on the spelling bees. I'm really good at spelling, but I type so fast or I use speech to text. And when I do it, I hit enter. My defense, sometimes I don't want to hit enter, but enter on the keyboard used to return it. Now it sends the message and I'm like, I didn't mean to send it. I do have a, an app that corrects my grammar and my spelling, and I don't get to use it because I hit enter thinking it was going to take it so I could go like another paragraph instead. And when I'm speech to text, I don't put in punctuation, but I will do next paragraph and it'll put that gap in there like enter does. And then I will go to correct it and hit enter and it sends my speech to text. So I just go with it. I don't, I don't care anymore. I just send it. Obviously it was meant to go out as is. It's the way I look at it. So sometimes deciphering my messages can be quite amusing because of the grammar errors. Surrey doesn't always say what I want. So even texting can come across wrong. So just think of this as another facet of your relationship. You're learning the subjects you can talk about, learning the subjects you can't talk about. So no politics again on this page, but let's talk about Roe versus Wade for a second. Everybody has a different opinion on it. Everybody has a different opinion. So you may have a different opinion and you decide that that is a topic of conversation that you don't want to talk about anymore. Should you have known that before the relationship? No because there wasn't an issue before the relationship. It's because it's overturned that this now becomes a conversation. For those of you who are gonna ask, personally, I am pro-life. I think that this baby was a gift, but I also know that not every baby is a gift, especially in the case of incest, rape, that that's not a gift that could be very damaging for the person to give birth to the baby. There are other incidences where I do feel that it's not always a bad thing, but I am pro-choice because I know people are going to have one. They should be allowed to have a safe one. We had a family member that died from dirty abortions. I don't want to ever see that happen to somebody else's family. So I personally, unless it was incest or rape, would not have an abortion. But I think that a woman has the right to choose. And if they do have the right to choose, it should be a safe procedure. Have I ever had one? Absolutely not. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't. DNCs are for rape victims, but they can't always do them. So if they're going to have to have one, let it be clean. That's my opinion on it. So what my choice is, 
Doesn't matter though. What your choice is does because it is a personal choice. Should it be a law that we can have one? I don't know about that because that's not in the constitution. And it's also not in the constitution to protect a man's body. The constitution has been amended though multiple times over the years. But I do think it should be a safe procedure so it should be legal. But have those conversations. I don't do politics on my channel, but I just gave you a feeling about what I did. I opened myself up. I allowed myself to tell what I feel. Be truthful. Don't just go with it. You are somebody who loves Joe Biden. Explain why. If you are somebody who loves Donald Trump, I love Donald Trump. He's one of the master manifestors. I got to grow up watching this man do his thing. He did come from a wealthy family, but he created his own billion dollar empire by using his words to create that. I do like that he was president. He did a lot of good for this country. We have been trying to make peace with North Korea for a long time. He did it. Do I like the mean tweets? I'm Gen X. They don't bother me. I'm going to be straight up honest. They don't bother me. But have those conversations. If the only reason you like Joe Biden is because he doesn't send out mean tweets, that's going to be a more difficult conversation because we're going to tell you, go do some research. As somebody who is Gen X, we don't care. I mean, our motto was sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Names do hurt. We just didn't let it affect us. When you get bullied, it hurts. And when you're fixing your head, everything that goes on in your reality, it hurts you. And I don't want you to be hurt because they're sitting there and you don't know what to do. You're planning a vacation and you walk in and they're watching TV. What are you watching? I don't know. Well, what's the show? I don't know. Well, why are you watching it? It was on. You want to go on vacation? Uh-huh. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Because you didn't put those words in their head. And you didn't give them free will so they can't answer you. Think of this as a movie. And this person is sitting there following a script. Your script gives them no free will. Your script says that you have to create everything. They're living with you and you, you don't want to do that. You're fully committed. You don't want to do that. Enjoy the awkward phase and learning how to talk to each other. Just like you are enjoying that awkward phase of living together because you dated, you're fully committed. You moved in together. You got married. You moved in together. You are going to go through awkward periods. You have your first child. You've been living together with somebody for 10 years. You've been doting on them. You have a child. Now, all of a sudden, that person feels like dog meat because you're exhausted. I was exhausted. The baby's eating every hour on the hour. You don't get any sleep. And you're not waiting on them hand and foot like you used to. You got to find a way to adapt. Then you have a second child. They're even more dog meat because now you're taking care of two children. You're exhausted, but you're not letting them help because you have to create everything. Literally, you have to create everything. Or worse, you're running around going, they don't do nothing. We have this baby and he doesn't do nothing with the baby. He doesn't do nothing. My father-in-law, I never changed a diaper. Really, Dad? You're going to brag about that? That's what I would tell him. I don't want to hear it. So before I would run to the store and I would leave the baby with him for 30 minutes, I'll go with you. I'll drive. So he would drive me everywhere. I had my own chauffeur. It was amazing. I love dad and I miss dad for this. He always drove. Let your guy drive. I understand it's your car, but my son will tell you when he gets into my car, I'm not riding bitch. So he drives. My Camaro, I let him drive. I also make him open my doors. I see him do that with his girlfriends. He would open up the door for her. Let them be the man of the house. And if 
You are the guy in the relationship. Be the man of the house and let them be the woman of the house. Like, I want to be the girl in the relationship. Let the girl be the girl. She doesn't want to be independent. She wants you to be the man of the house. And the man of the house can still be feminine because I've seen that in relationships. And the woman of the house can still be masculine because he's still the man of the house, even in his feminine things. I mean, I had a friend and he cooked, he sewed, he ran the household. She was the opposite. Yes, she cleaned the house and she did laundry, but she was the guy, he was the girl, but he still ran the household. Let the male partner do the male thing. Let the female partner be the female in the relationship because an independent woman wants to submit. We are so tired of having to do it all that we want to submit, but we're not gonna submit to a boy. We're not. We're not gonna be the girl in the relationship, the woman in the relationship. We're not gonna be the feminine in the relationship if you're the boy. Because we are so used to doing everything. It's why men today love cougars. Because we're willing to be the woman in the relationship. We're willing to spoil you, because I spoil my guys, and in return I get spoiled back. But y'all aren't going to take that word away from me. If you have a bad association with it, go find a word you don't have a bad association with. And we are going to spoil each other because that's what a marriage is. You want to keep it, you got to learn to talk to your person. You got to learn. Go through that awkward phase. Have fun with it. Because once you do, you're going to find out that that person that you want to be your best friend, your partner, is actually a really pretty cool dude. And that's why you wanted him in the first place. Guys, you wanted us in the first place for a reason. If you're having a hard time talking to her, go talk to your mom. Think about this. She's a woman. Go talk to her. How, and notice how you talk to your mom. Now, don't go home and talk to your wife that way. But notice how you talk to your mom, how easy it is. And then sit there and say, wow, it's so easy to talk to my mom. Why is it so easy to talk to my wife? Because it's easy to talk to my mom. Why do we have fun conversations? Because it's easy. Why is it easy to have fun conversations? Because it's easy to have fun conversations. You may have to bridge that gap with your words. I love you. Have an absolutely positively amazing day. And as always, leave me a comment. Let me know how I am drastically changing your life for the better. And we have the clicker war. I actually like the clicker war, which is why it doesn't fix it. I have three of these and this is the only one that works.